Hey everyone, welcome back to part three of our asset location series. In part one, we laid the foundation by introducing several key asset location concepts. In part two, we showed you how you could increase your portfolio's expected after-tax return by essentially tricking yourself into increasing its after-tax exposure to stocks. This was accomplished by allocating stocks to your TFSA first, non-registered account second, and RSP last. Although this strategy is often described as tax efficient, its expected outperformance is simply the result of taking more after-tax equity risk. So not only is it no free lunch, its success is not really due to asset location. There is, however, an asset location strategy that is truly more tax efficient than any we've discussed so far. I'm Justin Bender, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital in Toronto. In our asset location series finale, we'll show you how to implement the holy grail of asset location, what we like to call the plaid strategy. The plaid strategy is a more modern take on asset location strategies, and yet it's still based on several key concepts from part one of our video series. First, the after-tax, tax-free portion of your RSP behaves much like your TFSA, and just like your TFSA, you never pay tax on any growth earned on the after-tax portion of your RSP. Second, your after-tax asset allocation drives your after-tax returns, not your before-tax asset mix. If you haven't done so already, now is a good time to check out the first video in our asset location series for a full explanation of these key concepts. Once you grasp them, the light bulb comes on and you soon realize the government portion of your RSP and all growth on this portion never really accrues to you, so it can be ignored entirely. To implement a plat asset location strategy, you'll need to manage your portfolio's asset allocation on an after-tax rather than a before-tax basis. And since the after-tax portion of your RSP behaves like a TFSA, that is, you never pay any tax on the growth earned on this portion of your RSP, you'll realize you want to hold investments with the highest expected returns, like stocks, in your RSP and TFSA first, and then in your non-registered accounts last. So the first step to planning out your plat approach is to determine your after-tax total portfolio value. For this example, we'll use the same before-tax account values from our last video. A $400,000 RSP, a $100,000 TFSA, and a $500,000 non-registered account. We'll also assume the same 50% average tax rate on the RSP withdrawals in retirement. Based on this, our RSP is worth $200,000 after tax, or 50% of the $400,000 before tax RSP value, making the total after tax portfolio value $800,000. And just like in our last video, we'll target a 60% stock, 40% bond after tax asset allocation for our light asset location strategy, holding the same asset mix across all accounts. This can again be accomplished by holding the Vanguard Balanced ETF portfolio, or VBAL, in each account. We'll target the same 60-40 after-tax asset mix for our plaid asset location strategy, using the same funds we used for our ludicrous asset location strategy in part two. So for our stock allocation, we'll hold the Vanguard All Equity ETF portfolio with ticker symbol VEQT, and for bonds, We'll hold the Vanguard Canadian Aggregate Bond Index ETF with ticker symbol VAB plus the Vanguard Global Aggregate Bond Index ETF, CAD Hedged, with ticker symbol VGAB. In both our light and plat examples, we'll allocate $480,000 of the total after-tax portfolio value to stocks and $320,000 to bonds. This will provide us with our 60% stock, 40% bond, after-tax asset mix. For the plaid asset location strategy, we'll start by allocating $200,000 of stocks to the RSP first and $100,000 to our TFSA next. Practically speaking, the RSP is actually worth $400,000 before tax, so this is the amount of VEQT we'll purchase in the RSP. After allocating a total of $300,000 to stocks, we still need another $180,000 in stocks, so we'll purchase this amount in our non-registered account. The last thing to do is to purchase the entire bond allocation of $320,000 in our non-registered account. We've now created a 60% stock, 40% bond, after-tax asset allocation for both our light and plaid asset location strategies. Let's now assume stocks return 6% over the next year, and this return is comprised of a fully taxable dividend yield of 2%, 
plus a 4% capital gain with a 50% inclusion rate. We'll also assume our bonds return 2% over the next year, and this amount is fully taxable. Our average tax rate will be 50%, and since the $200,000 RSP value is an after-tax figure, and again, the after-tax RSP behaves like a TFSA for tax purposes, there will be no taxes payable on this amount or on any of its investment growth. After paying all taxes on at the end of the year, we find the Plaid Asset Location Strategy outperformed the Light Asset Location Strategy by 0.15% after tax. By allocating the stocks with higher expected growth to the RSP and TFSA first, while keeping the after-tax asset allocation the same as our Light Strategy, the Plaid Asset Location Strategy was able to outperform the Light Strategy with a truly more tax-efficient approach. So aside from the fact that this level of asset location is ridiculously complicated, why isn't everyone managing their ETF portfolio this way? Well, even though both strategies had the same after-tax asset allocation, the Plaid Asset Location Strategy required a higher before-tax allocation to stocks. If we look at the portfolio from a before-tax perspective, you'd need to fill your entire before-tax RSP with $400,000 of stocks, resulting in a before-tax asset allocation of 68% stocks and 32% bonds. Realistically, this is a tough pill to swallow. Most investors are used to thinking about their accounts on a before-tax basis, especially since that's how the numbers get reported to them. To manage a plaid asset location strategy, you'll need to look past those seemingly riskier before-tax numbers in your RSP statements and accept that the government is taking on the extra equity risk for you. As with our other portfolios, let's review the advantages and disadvantages of a plaid asset location strategy. We'll start with the advantages. First, it is officially the most tax efficient asset location strategy. Even with our three ETF portfolio, there are noticeable tax benefits to employing the strategy. And now that you're prioritizing equities in your RSP, there will be additional opportunities to reduce your product costs and the withholding tax drag on foreign dividends by investing in US-based foreign equity ETFs. Second, you can expect lower capital gains from rebalancing. Since you can hold most of your equities in your RSP and TFSA, you can also do most of your portfolio rebalancing there. This can reduce the tax drag from occasional rebalancing. This may be a bigger deal if you're not adding enough new cash to your portfolio and topping up your underweight asset classes over time. Of course, there are disadvantages as well. First, we can't predict future tax rates. Without a time-traveling DeLorean, you'll never know for sure what the future average tax rates will be for your registered account withdrawals and taxable capital gains. However, you can work with a financial planner to make some reasonable assumptions. Second, as touched on earlier in the video, you'll need to take more before-tax equity risk. To go plaid, you'll have to allocate a higher percentage of your portfolio to stocks before tax, understanding it's actually a lower after-tax allocation. Some investors can live with that by understanding it's ultimately the government, not them, taking the extra equity risk. But most investors will feel the full extent of the portfolio's losses during the next downturn. If you might blink at the first sign of stock market trouble, you'll probably want to stick with a single asset allocation ETF. Third, you need to love number crunching. Personally, I love numbers, but even I got a little dizzy writing the script for this video. And that's using simplified examples. Your real life portfolio management will be even messier. You'll need to continually update your after-tax ETF values, and when unrealized capital gains start to accumulate in your non-registered account, they'll create lower after-tax values for the appreciated funds you continue to hold, further complicating the calculations. Okay, we've now reached the end of our asset location video series. Our plaid asset location strategy overshot the complexity of our other strategies by about a million miles, so no one will blame you if you decide to stick with a light asset location strategy. As I've said before, by using a single asset allocation ETF in each of your accounts, you'll still be light years ahead of most do-it-yourself investors. I'm Justin Bender of PWO, and this is the Canadian Portfolio Manager YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this asset location video series, please feel free to share it with your friends, family, or colleagues. See you next time.